Hi folks, welcome to my channel here on YouTube again. I'm going to today give a quick follow-up to a presentation that I gave at the Octo Project Summit last week. Um, I'll post a link to the presentation in the description for this video if anyone's interested. Um, what I spoke about then was you know, using Rust with the Octo Project showed some basic Rust code, showed how to create recipes for those Rust projects so we could build them under Yocto projects. But what I didn't have time to include in my presentation was just how easy it is to get started. Um, so what you need to install to use Rust. Um, and yeah, just how straightforward it is to get started with it. Now the other thing I've recorded on this channel is set up of a new Debian 10 based virtual machine for development. So with that we got as far as the initial install of the OS on the virtual machine and you know we checked we could connect into it with both Visual Studio Code and a terminal emulator. So at the minute this is a very plain Debian installation. Um, so it really needs some more things installing on it. So yeah what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bridge the gap between a very plain Debian system with nothing installed and what I was showing off in the presentation that I did. So we're going to install the dependencies that we need for Rust um, and then we're going to install Rust itself and we're just going to show a couple of basic things. So in terms of dependencies I'm going roughly off memory from installing this previously, but I know we need uh, the build essential package, which is GCC, Linker, and other things for cargo bitbake. Um, I think we need libssl dev. Um, I think that's for cargo bitbake. It's for something that we're using. We need the SSL development libraries. There may be some others, I know I haven't got Git installed yet on this VM, so the first step is going to be to go ahead and install um, these dependencies we need. So this is a Debian based system, so we apt install build essential libssl dev and git. So that's what I think we need at the minute. And this is going to install a bunch of packages. Um, hopefully this is everything we need. If something else comes up, we'll install it as we go. So we're just going to wait for this to finish installing. shouldn't take very long from here. So I'm picking back up here after the installation is finished and while that was going I realised there was another thing that we needed to install. So the package config tool is needed as well. This basically is a little tool for searching for libraries that have been, been installed and it's used to search for that libssl dev package that we installed as a dependency. So next step we're going to take is to install Rust itself. We've got the dependencies installed now, so let's look at Rust itself. Um, the installer for Rust is on this website, rustop.rs. So this is the setup tool for the Rust toolchain and cargo and various other components. Now if we go to this site, it's going to show us what it thinks we need for the system that our browser is running on, which in this case is running on my Windows desktop. I actually want to install this on the Linux VM, so we're going to look at this list of other ways to install Rust up. Um, and we're just going to grab this recommended command for Unix. So this, this curl command here is going to download the setup script and run it. So we're going to grab that and we're going to run that as our user in here. So this is going to download the Rust toolchain 
it gives us a little spiel about what it's going to do. It says that it's going to put rust up in this dot rust up directory in my home directory. It's going to put cargo in dot cargo in my home directory. And the this bin directory here for cargo is where all the executable is going to land. And any packages we install ourselves using cargo are also going to be put in this bin directory. So it's going to put this bin directory on our path so that we can run programs from this directory in the future. So we have to reload defaults and we're just going to say proceed with the installation. And this just takes 30 seconds or a minute or so to download things and build them or install them. And it very quickly says that Rust is now installed. So we're going to source this environment file that it's listing for us at the bottom. And this is going to pull in these new modifications to our path. So from here, what we can do is we can you know, check the version of the Rust compiler. We can check the version of Cargo and confirm that those are actually installed. So that's looking pretty happy. So what we're going to do, we're just going to give this a really quick test. We're going to use cargo init to create a very simple project. We're just going to create a hello project. And what, when you run cargo init, it creates a cargo.toml file for the project with some really basic information. And it creates a source file that just prints hello world. So to just check the tool chain that we've installed, we're going to build that using cargo and we're going to use cargo run as the shortcut to run that and it prints hello world. So that's looking pretty good as a basic test. We're also going to test the print rand application that I showed as part of my presentation. So just for completeness. Um, we're going to clone the Git repository for that, which is on my GitLab account. And yet yeah, again, we're going to do the same thing. We need to do cargo build. Now, this takes slightly longer than hello, so what it's doing is it's fetching a list of all the crates which are available. So these are the applications and libraries written in Rust, which have been published to crates.io, which is essentially a, an index site for Rust. Um, so it's going to build the dependencies of our application, and then it's going to build our application itself. So again, we can use cargo run to run that application, and it's going to print a different random number each time we run it. And just to show you that cargo run is just a shortcut, we can actually directly run the built application itself. So, yeah, we've shown some basic functionality here. We've checked that the toolchain works. The other thing I wanted to show was how to install and run Cargo Bitbake. So that was a tool I talked about in my presentation that can generate Yocto project recipes for software that is written in Rust. So now that we've got Cargo installed, we can use it to install other Rust applications fairly easily. So we're going to go to the crates.io website. So this is an index site for crates, which are, say, applications and libraries written in the Rust programming language. So anything that's listed on here, we can install fairly easily with Cargo. So the Cargo Bitbake tool, we're going to search for that. And yet we got an exact match. So Cargo Bitbake has been published onto crates.io um, and it's fairly straightforward to install it using this cargo install command. And then it shows us an example of how to use it 
afterwards. So essentially that's what we're going to replicate for our point rand application. We're going to install cargo bitbake. And this is going to take slightly longer to download and install than the previous things because it's got 184 different dependencies here. So this is the cargo, it depends on the cargo tool library itself um, for accessing crates to IO and downloading things. So that because that handles building Rust applications, that's a fairly hefty package with lots of dependencies. So we're just going to wait for a minute for all those to download and install. So now that Cargo Bitbake has finished installing, it took about maybe two or three minutes there. Uh, oh, it says here, one minute 55 seconds. So yeah, now it's finished installing, we can give it a try. So because it's essentially set up as a subcommand of Cargo itself, uh, we run this uh, using Cargo space Bitbake rather than Cargo dash Bitbake. But yeah, if we run this in our print run directory, it's going to look at the project that we've got. It's going to look at the cargo toml file to find out the various bits of metadata for the project and the dependencies. And it's also going to look at the local Git repository that we've got here to determine the remote URL it's going to fetch from and the um, revision that it's going to pull down. So yeah, pretty straightforward. We run that. It spits out a recipe for us. And if I cut that recipe, it's going to look exactly the same as the recipe that we showed in that I showed in the presentation I did. So this is now in a pretty good state for building with Yocto project. So yeah, that brings us to the point where we've got Rust installed, we've got Cargo Bitbake installed, we've showed that we can actually build things with the Rust toolchain on this VM, and we've showed that we can generate a recipe. Pretty much everything else here in terms of you know setting this up to build with the Octo project is covered in a combination of the presentation that I did last week and in the, Rus the Yocto project quick start guide. So if you follow the quick start guide, or quick build guide as it's now called, to get your build environment set up and then follow what I did in the presentation, then you should be able to build these recipes successfully in the Octo project. So I'm going to finish up there for today. That's all I wanted to show off. Um, We'll continue with some further Rust development in a future video fairly soon, I hope. So thank you very much, and I'll see you all soon.